everyone. I'm spending the day with some real recycling trucks today to see how these amazing vehicles tidy away our waste whilst also looking after our planet. There's so much happening here at the recycling depot with trucks coming and going. Just look at how the little forklift trucks zoom around, taking the rubbish out of the sides of the trucks and tipping them into their own special places. But our story begins at home. Have you ever wondered what happens to the rubbish you put in your bins? Recycling trucks have special days when they come past your house to collect all of the rubbish. Recycling is a way of separating different types of rubbish that you throw out so that it can be used again and again. This all starts at home, so it's up to all of us to separate plastics, paper, cans and food waste into their different bins to get them ready for collection. Here comes the truck now. It's purple. I love purple. This is Simon and Daniel and they drive the recycling truck down the street collecting all of this rubbish. They jump out of the truck and put the different types of rubbish in their own special place on board. Look, there's a place for everything. Cans and plastic go here. Glass goes in here. Food waste goes in here. With paper and cardboard at the back in these compartments. When the truck is full, it's time to head back to the depot to empty everything out. First, the truck drives onto some weighing scales. These are just like scales in your bathroom at home. But instead of weighing people, they weigh trucks. This tells the control centre just how much rubbish is on board the truck. Then, it's time for the zoomy little forklifts to do their whizzy work. They pull each container out from the sides of the truck and drive them to their own special place at the depot. Wow! Listen to that noisy glass. Huge bulldozers are used to push all the loose materials into a big pile. Then, to make everything smaller so that it can be easily transported for recycling, loose materials like plastic, cans and paper are squashed into bales. The final stage of recycling is called reprocessing. This is the bit where these bales are turned into something new that we can use again. The bales are taken on the back of big lorries to special factories for reprocessing. Glass can be melted down and made into new bottles. And the bales of cans can also be melted and turned into new cans ready to be filled with new drinks. When we recycle, it means we don't have to cut down new trees to make paper. We can keep reusing the paper we already have. Recycling is amazing but not as amazing as our beautiful planet that we all live on. That's why we have to work together to recycle and reuse our rubbish. Thanks to all the team at Kia for taking me out on their special recycling trucks today. Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash 
very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away, loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle. There's three rollers in total, two that clean each side of the truck and one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away and the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job team! Some of my mechanical friends are trying to get back to Gecko's garage today. So I think we should go and pick them up on this amazing Arriva bus. Buses are fantastic vehicles. They carry lots of passengers around town and take people to places they need to go. Buses have lots of space inside to fit as many people on as possible. What shape is this bus? Yes, it's a rectangle. Look how many seats are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight seats! Wow! And when the seats are full, there's even places for people to stand. Look, you can hold on to these handrails. And these grab handles too, to make sure you don't fall over when the bus stops. This is Mary and she's the driver of this bus. Mary's just going round the bus to do all of her safety checks before going out on the road. What shape are the wheels on the bus? Yes, they're a circle. This bus is special because it runs on electricity. That means it doesn't have to be filled with petrol or diesel. But instead, it can be plugged in and charged. It's got a big battery that stores all of the electricity up on the roof. Hi Gecko, do you want to come and see where I drive my bus? Yes, please. Mary sits in a place called the cab and to get into the driving seat, 
she opens this door and climbs inside. Mary can then press this button to open and close the electric doors. There's lots of other buttons and controls for Mary to press in here too. To start the bus, Mary presses this button. I think it's time we went and picked up the mechanicals. Mary, can I buy a ticket, please? To buy a ticket, passengers give the correct money to the driver and she prints them a ticket. Mary can change the sign on the front to tell people where the bus is going. Hooray! We're off to my garage. Don't worry, mechanicals. We're coming for you. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. All day long. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. All day long. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. Print, print, print. Print, print, print. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. All day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. All day long. Oh, hey there. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. All day long. Oh, ho. The doors on the bus go open and close. Open and close. Open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close. All day long. Hello, Red Mechanical. I hope we didn't keep you waiting there too long. Come on board, take a seat. The thing I love best about travelling around on a bus is looking out of the big windows and spotting things. There's lots of different shaped road signs around. This one is square. This one is a circle. And this one is a triangle. This one's very important because it tells vehicles to slow down because there might be children around. Hello, Blue Mechanical. We've had to stop at a traffic light because it's on red. There's three different traffic light colours. Red, amber and green. The red light means stop. The amber light means the signal is about to change. And green means go, go, go. This bus is very smooth and very quiet because it runs on electricity. That means it's even better for the environment than other buses. It's Green Mechanical. Hello. Right, I think that's everyone now. Let's head back to the garage. Can you remember all of the shapes we've learnt today? Rectangle Circle Square and Triangle Thanks very much to Mary and all the team at Ariba for taking us on this amazing bus journey today. What do you say, Mechanicals? That's thank you. I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors.
tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tyre with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor and today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, 
Do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. I'm here at Truckfest to meet a really big machine. A monster truck. Wow! Look at the size of the wheels on that thing. One of my best friends is a monster truck and he'd really like to meet Big Red over here. Come along, Max. Come and say hello to Big Red. Who do you think is bigger? Max or Big Red? Big Red's only built for taking passengers on a ride on his back. Look how much fun that looks. But I'm here to meet a stunt monster truck. A monster truck that crushes and jumps cars. is Swamp Thing, a huge monster truck that weighs as much as two elephants. Swamp Thing is 14 feet tall. That's almost as tall as a giraffe. Let's take a look at Swamp Thing in action. Three, two, one, go! Wow, just look at those cars getting crushed! The monster truck is so heavy that when it lands on the cars, they are squashed as flat as a pancake. Swamp Thing is a really amazing monster machine. I wonder what it's like to drive a monster truck. This is Swamp Thing's driver, Tony. He's using his tools to perform a safety check on Swamp Thing. He's checking that all the nuts and bolts are tight so that a wheel doesn't fall off in the middle of a show. Tony, what's it like to drive a monster truck? To drive a monster truck, for me, it's the best job in the world. I saw it on TV when I was about eight years old and I never thought I'd be doing it for a living. Um, the feel you get in there, it's so noisy, so bumpy, but the adrenaline keeps you going. How do you get in Swamp Thing? Most people think you climb on the tyres, but I'll show you how you get in. It's fairly simple. Just walk around the side of it. Doors don't open. What you got is a climbing frame and literally you just climb up on the inside and then you're straight in the seat. Okay, how do you drive a monster truck? Literally, we've got one pedal for go, and one pedal for stop. That's the starting and stopping. Now we've got to work out how to steer it. Front wheels is just like a car, turns in a steering wheel. Unlike a normal car, we've got back steering, so this turns on a joystick, left and right on the back. So who's ready to crush some cars? Tony, 
Johnny built this monster truck himself, using lots of different parts, from lorries and diggers. He knows it inside out. When Tony takes Swamp Thing around the country, he can't take it on the roads. So the monster machine has to travel in Tony's massive lorry. Swamp Thing has many of the things that a normal car would have, only they're much, much bigger. There's the wheels, the engine, the exhaust, the suspension, which gives Tony a softer landing, the brakes, the chassis, and the cabin. All of these things are designed so that Swamp Thing can jump, like this. Well, it's time to say goodbye to Tony and Swamp Thing now. Thanks very much for joining us to learn about this amazing machine. I'm spending the day with a real ambulance today. We're going to be having a look inside, then going out on the road with the ambulance crew and visiting a special garage just for ambulances. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. They're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine. Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button. The ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch so that Paul and Terry can talk to each other. Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. When a call comes in, it's time for Paul and Terry to turn the lights on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard, with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the mechanic to fix the problem. There, that's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? 
After travelling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty, so this is where they're given a good wash. Blue Mechanical, you better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh, too late. Thanks very much to Paul, Terry and the whole team at the Northwest Ambulance Service for teaching us about the important service that you provide. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!